Hey, how we doing everyone? I thought I'd show you the uh, latest modification I've made uh, to the HandyBot. Uh, so in the shop, uh, I actually mill a lot of HDP parts. This is one of the machine parts um, I make. And I actually make this on the, uh, on the full size shop out here. I'll do full um, four by eight sheets. And what happens um, occasionally is that when you're doing some of the handwork on these, or even if I mess up on the big shop, you'll nick one of these things or damage them. Um, and along with these big pieces, I make a ton of little parts like this. And I wanted a method where I could use my handy bot uh, to turn what would otherwise be scrap into useful parts. And so what I've done um, in the past is I've tried to, you know, sort of hold these uh, pieces of HDP down on benches or uh, chunks of wood or old sheets of plywood and things like that. And I've had some success, but it's always hasn't been fast. You know, when I when I get a damaged part, I just want a machine, uh, you know, a secondary machine. I can just walk over, put the parts in, run them real quick. Um, and not have to think about it. So I ended up uh, modifying this HandyBot um, a fair amount to get this to work right. So I have, you know, a traditional uh, Fabmo-based HandyBot, this is the HandyBot Adventure Edition, and I bought from ShopBot the accessory base. Now this accessory base is meant to have the uh, manual 3 plus 2 axis, or they even have um, another rotary axis you can put in here. And so the base of it uh, is just this, uh, you know, you get the, the base here like this, and then you get this uh, HDPE drawer, and it's indexed um, every four inches, I believe. And so you can, you know, slide it in a certain amount and get it lined up like this. You can uh, lock it in, um, you know, do milling, and then slide the thing forward or back or whatever, so you get a little more wide travel out of it. It's actually a pretty clever um, little system. What I ended up doing, I'll just slide this out so you can see here, is I bought some aluminum T-Track. I actually got this from Amazon. I think it's by a company called Woodcraft. And I milled these little standoffs here. So um, since this is a profile cut, I was able to get a really accurate height because I milled this on another shop bot. Um, and I've got it bolted to the HDPE table and I've got the T-Track bolted to this. So this is all on here um, really, really sturdy. And then uh, this, uh, this T-Track is actually really nice. It just lets me slide in um, 7 16 head uh, quarter by 20 thread bolts. Um, so, you know, I can get a variety of different lengths of bolts and move it around with these little rocker clamps. And so my setup now is I'll put a piece of spoil board down. So I've got a lot of this eighth inch um, hardboard kicking around. So you put this on top of the T-Track and then you can clamp the HTP down in here. And what's nice is because I've got these little clamps, I can move them around anywhere because my scrap is not always the same size. So I can um, clamp you know, something large, something small. Um, it's very easy to put on there. And then once it's clamped down, you just slide the drawer in and lock it in place and mill. So you can do a setup here in just a minute and uh, you know walk away and go do some more um, important work. Uh, there were some issues getting this uh, getting this set up the right way though. And one of the first things I noticed is that um, the router could barely reach down into this area. And what I ended up having to do is I had to take the, the router uh, mount bracket off. And um, it's a little hard to see here, but there are a bunch of holes that you can put it in. I dropped it down to the lowest hole and I dropped the router as low as it could possibly go um, into the bracket. And what I realized is that it still didn't allow me to reach down to this plate. So that's why I have these uh, risers here and this T-Track. So now even with the little eighth inch bit, I can comfortably uh, reach down to the top of this T-Track um, and mill. The other thing I ran into is that with the router this low, when you're at Y0, so this direction, uh, the router body here will actually hit uh, the front here. So I had to change the Z0 script to actually um, move it forward an inch. So I lose an inch in the Y direction, which for the parts I mill isn't a big deal. And plus, because I can index this drawer, it's really not a big deal um, at all. So the, my XY0 routine now just does the routine and moves it forward an inch and zeros it out there. So I don't ever have to worry about um, hitting this. But the, the other um, challenging thing was uh, normally when I mill, I like to zero down to the spoil board. I do that on the big shop bot because this, this stuff varies in thickness a little bit. Um, but I always zero down to the spoil board and uh, so I can get certain thicknesses the same, like this little pocket here will always be the same distance off the spoil board. And so I wanted to have an easy way just to power the thing on um, and zero off of the spoil board or off of the T-Track if I wanted to. And I came up with this and this is just a, a rip off of what's on a large shop bot. So um, this is the uh, standard alligator clip for the, the Z0 on the handy bot. And I just added this little stretchy cable onto it so it can reach farther. And um, there's, I have an aluminum plate down here that's um, just temporarily set up right now, but it's just uh, clipped onto the chassis of the handybot. 
So there's no rewiring, nothing special here. And when you touch this plate to the bit like this, you'll see that input one on FabMo lights up. And input one is the, um, the grounding plate. So the, the reason why, there's two reasons why I'm zeroing down here. Number one, I want to zero off this T-track. Number two, with the router in this position, I can no longer get high enough to reach the swing out plate. Um, the, 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 uh, the router with a bit mount in it just comes up just a little bit short of being able to reach this. So what I did is I wrote a script uh, and I modified the Z0 script to actually um, zero off the pl this plate. And I'll run it for you now. So what this script is going to do, um, it's going to drive as high up as it can possibly go in the Z and it's going to bottom out. Um, and then it's going to start driving down and it's going to record the distance that it takes to go from the top to when the router bit taps this plate. And it's going to remember that distance and then it's going to zero out uh, on this plate and then it's going to pull back up to that distance um, because it now knows how far it can travel uh, before it hits and this is just a math trick so it's doing it without any extra proximity sensors or anything like that and the reason why is I want it to be able to zero on my Z but then have it pull all the way up and out of the way so I can jog around and move around and not be um, hitting my clamps or, or doing anything like that so I'll run the, the Z0 script here so this is just a custom macro that I wrote in OpenShotBot so let's go ahead and run it so it's going to remind you to um, put the alligator clip on and do all that, which we have uh, done here. So it's going to jog up in the Z and bottom out. And then it's going to slowly come down here. Then we'll get right in here so we can see for you. It's going to tap on the plate a couple times. Then it jogs back up. So our, uh, our Z is all zeroed out. And it, and it hovers up here at about three inches. So it's uh, far and away clear of all the clamps. But now, um, it's zero to uh, to that. If I had that spoil board on there, it would be zero uh, to that spoil board. Uh, so pretty simple routine. I'll run the uh, X Y uh, routine here. So um, this is my X Y zero. Um, it's just like the uh, just like the zero routine. It reminds you to make sure you pulled up the Z. So you can see it does the normal X routine here. But when it gets to the Y, see at the end jumps it'll jump forward an inch and that's where it zeroes it out so that way you get that extra clearance um, going down in here so that's the setup it's pretty simple um, let's get to some milling slide it out I've got it all done